Hey guys, good morning. Well, I say good morning because it's about 10, 10, 10, you know, morning time here at Wheelchair United Kingdom and where I am recording live from my home studio. This is Mary Angela Tuck, inviting you once again for another enjoyable and interesting 30 minutes. Well, today you are still at Crazy Talks with wise people. Indeed, we have a crazy but wise guest. But before I'm going to introduce him to you, I'd like him to sing his award-winning song. By the way, before I give him his name, it's a little bit of a suspense. Before I introduce him formally to you, I'd like you to listen to him. He is a Reverb Nation award-winning composer and artist. So I'd like you to listen to him first. He's going to sing his song a cappella because he is in his house right now and he doesn't have the accompaniments with them. But I know that you're going to be on fire or if not, Something in you, something spiritual is going to be ignited in you as you listen to his music. Let's welcome him. Thank Come you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God gave you the gift of life, made you wise and bright. Where you are, there is joy and light. You fell say you lead the night. Now you only play with politicians. Remember you wanted to be a physician. Sometimes you'd say you'd be a musician. Walk one with your dream. Now you only delete acquisition. What you gonna say to the Lord, man? If you die today, man, and it's your judgment day. What you gonna say to the Lord, man? If you die today, man, and it's your judgment day. <laughs> yeah, that this song is called Judgment Day. Oh, I called... see. All right. Yeah. So did you compose it? But you know, did you compose it yourself? Yes. <laughs> oh, wonderful. All right. Before we go further, let me introduce you to them. Well, our guest for today is Helio Six Pence from Mozambique. Helio Six Pence is a visionary and transformational leader like me, with a wealth of experience leading, designing, and managing corporate government NGOs and United Nations funded programs. He has served as executive leader at Heineken of what a phone interfaith platform for participatory governance, Bail Foundation, United Nations Development Program, UNDP. By the way, UNDP was one of those programs was responsible in bringing me to Africa and training the youth of Africa in 2017. <laughs> okay, something that, um, you know, we, we, we share something in common. Um, okay, Joint Aid Management or JAM, um, the World Vision, International, you know, World Vision International, I'm sure that you're familiar with World Vision, okay? Um, besides lecturing at St. Thomas University, Instituto Superior e Politecnico de Gaza, and Universidade Pedagogica, um, he's also passionate about serving the needy. His focus and life mission is empowering people for the betterment of their lives. Yeah, I'm also teaching social entrepreneurship. <laughs> we have a lot of things in common. Covering okay. poverty reduction, good governance and accountability, humanitarian assistance, disaster recovery, health and nutrition, um, child protection, sustainability development, gender and human rights, and skills development and training. With the industry, Mr. Sixpence is acknowledged for delivering strategy, corporate and service culture, organizational effectiveness, 
development programs from A to Z. Oh, by the way, I'm also into women, women empowerment. I am uh, supporting one NGO right now who is into women empowerment. And um, and um, I, have lined, I have some lined up projects for women. Another thing in common between us. He is the founder and chief entertainment officer of Duffy Whalers, the Groove Makers Band, and the owner of Duffy Conquerors Events. The Roots Crib Restaurant, Duffy Conqueror Restaurant, and founder and managing director of Elyon. Oh my goodness, you've got a lot of accomplishments at your age. Oh dear. Okay, so let's all welcome him again. <laughs> okay, um, Helio Sixpence. By the way, before you know, I I I would I'm I'd be very proud to share the stage with you soon. Uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, he is organizing an event for both of us, and uh, it is going to be a transformational event in Mozambique. It is going to transform you in a way that you will not be the same person again if you will be applying what you will learn from us. So he is going to use his music, and I'm going to use my lecturing, and I'm sure that we will be bringing something new and something refreshing and something like change to every one of you in Mozambique. All right, so let's welcome you back. Now, the first question is, <laughs> the first question is, uh, well, with all this corporate, with all this corporate background that you have, um, tell you, how come you ventured into music? Because you told me that you retired from Heineken, and now you're just doing you're 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 um, you're a social entrepreneur, um, supporting a lot of of, of establishments, and composing music for the Lord for God. What happened, and what triggered you to change your direction? Well, uh, you see, this has been. Um, I started. Um, uh, doing music when I was a child and um, you know I lost my parents when I was 16 mm. and um, you know uh, throughout my uh, my studies I I went through a lot and um, you know for a boy living in Africa without parents you know uh, it's really really hard you know to continue studying but uh, through God's mercy, you know, things were not that tough for me in the sense that, you know, I felt his hands and uh, to the point that when I uh, finished my university degrees, uh, you know, at the age of 22, I have decided to, you know, give back, you know, to, 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 to retribute the, the, the love, the mercy, the protection and the support that I had from God. So that's um, when I decided to join uh, World Vision International, uh, you know, where I started my career uh, in uh, health and nutrition programs. And, uh, you know, uh, I continued working within the development sector until um, uh, my tenure with the uh, United Nations Development Program, where I felt that, you know, I was at the, you know, the, the highest or, you know, within the development sector. And uh, I had to move and uh, start doing business, you know, so that I could, uh, you know, potentially uh, build businesses for myself. Okay. And, uh, yeah. yeah, and I started, you know, uh, with a Vodacom, a Vodafone, and uh, within Vodafone, I have used what we call transferable skills, which was basically, you know, everything that, um, you know, I got within the development sector where I started projects, you know. And, um, you know, uh, after six years within Vodafone, um, after learning a lot about innovation and uh, marketing, I have moved to Heineken. But within Heine, I worked for Heineken for four years. Uh, and, uh, you know, after all, we went through COVID and et cetera, you know, that led me 
to profound uh, uh, examination of uh, you know where uh, oh, oh, what this uh, the state we were living in you know globally and uh, you know I thought well maybe this is a call you know for the humanity you know we got to remind ourselves that you know despite the all the 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 the, the, the money all the the gold, all the diamonds and et cetera, we have, you know, uh, we cannot play God's role. And that means we really need to go back and, uh, you know, realign ourselves with, or realign ourselves with him, you know, to understand why we exist. And, um, you know, this journey was so insightful and interesting, you know, because I have learned that we do exist uh, or we, 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 we go through it just to, you know, uh, just to rehearse for the eternity. And, uh, you know, in the eternity, basically what we're going to do is, uh, you know, we're going to show God that we know him, we love him back. We love, you know, our peers. All we right. we, we okay. support our peers. Yes. Let, me in, let, let, let me interrupt a while because I'd like to highlight some of your answers. You said you grew up as uh, you grew up as an orphan. Okay. And you said that um, as an orphan, it was very difficult for you to pave your way through the university, but you finished your university in a way. And then um, you were successful in the corporate world. Now, I just like you to be very specific uh, for the benefits of those who are listening to us. How did you see God's grace helping you out as an orphan, you know, with your life, with your emotional, spiritual, physical well being, until you finished the, you know, briefly tell them, how did you see God's hands uh, holding you? during your journey as an orphan you know from there from nothing to something you know so please uh briefly tell us about it because i know that a lot of people will be inspired through your testimony well i used to i used to go to church you know but um, honestly uh, uh, i did not learn the bible or i did not learn you know uh, the relationship with with, with with God, oh, how a, st a strong relationship with God looked like. And uh, I strongly believe that God saw and he knew my heart. Uh, he knew, he just knew that I, I was there for him, but, you know, I wasn't getting the right support or the right, uh, the right uh, 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 orientation. Mm. And, uh, and, uh, and um, you know, Every single time uh, I, would, I would kneel and pray, I would see my prayers answered. You know, just to give you an example, uh, when, I, when I passed, actually, you know, uh, we do 12 grades before the university in Mozambique. And instead of 12 grades, I've done 11. So on, on, during grade, uh, grade 11, my lectures, thought they would punish me and uh you know they used to give me extra work but now for their surprise you know the extra work made me strong to the point that they got surprised and um you know they used me to to, to lecture uh, on on grad 12 and because i had high marks i thought well why would i waste one year of my life starting grad 12, if I am lecturing and I'm supporting, you know, people from grad 12, and then I've decided <laughs> to register for external exams and I passed. All right. The mm -hmm. and, and the same happened at the university. I was supposed to do five years and I've done four years. And I did two, two degrees at the, uh, the same year. I mean, the same, uh, um, during the same period. So, you know, all that, you know, I didn't have money to to do the to, to register the university, and I just went there. And how did you, yeah, all right. That's interesting. How did you register when you didn't have money? Just uh, I prayed before I prayed okay. before entering the principal's chambers, and uh, I told him, "Look, 
you know, I am young, 17 years old, you know, I've got high marks, I've got interests, but, you know, I don't have anyone to support me with the studies. I want to study, I, I've passed the exams, so please, I need your help. The guy looked at me and just, you know, wrote a paper and told me, go to the finance department. And uh, the finance department, they took me to the hotel and, uh, where I stayed uh, for one year. Everything paid by the university. And oh, wow. That yeah. is, yeah, that's a favor from God. Exactly. You really, I mean, no university will really do that, yeah. you know? Wow, yeah. that's a, really a favor from God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You are yeah. highly favored by the Most High God. And he is truly faithful, right? If you just believe in him, he's truly faithful. All his promises in the Bible will really come to pass into our yeah. lives. Wow. Okay. Exactly. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Another thing that I'd like you to um, expound on based on your introduction is that um, um, you said that human beings, you know, we have a purpose and a reason for our existence. When did you discover that you have a purpose in spite of the fact that you're orphaned, you didn't have the means, you know, financial capacity to uh, fend for yourself through the, you know, um, grade school, high school, college, and university. In spite of that, in spite of your striving hard life, you still realize that we do have, we are created for a purpose, and we are here on earth for a reason. When did you realize that? And what did you do after realizing? And how did you discover? Yeah, first, how did you discover your purpose in life? And why do you feel like there's a need for every human being to realign himself and herself to God, our creator, and, you know, who created us, who knew us before even we were born, right? And he chose the family where we will be birthed. Um, he chose our nationality um, because he knew us. He, he formed us before we, we even knew him. So, so he, he, he knew everything. He knew everything. And so can you please explain to us um, again <laughs> um, how you found out that you have a purpose in life and what made you change, you know, after finding out what were the, what were the situations that occurred and how did you step to that calling? I remember when I was a child, um, I used to, you know, love to help people, you know, but uh, I would even give my, uh, my, 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 my snacks to colleagues mm -hmm. at school, um, you know, my father once gave me this watch and um, I remember I saw someone you know, asking for money because he he didn't know how to go back home. I didn't have money and I just, you know, it gave him my watch. Like, okay, you sell and see what you can do with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I grew up, I, um, I knew that, you know, I was born to make people feel happy. I was born to support people. But, you know, that wasn't clear. I didn't know why exactly, you know until um, you know after covid when i started doing this reflection you know um uh, last year i uh, i met this friend of mine uh, who is a pastor and uh, you know he, 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 during our discussions you know uh, he decided to you know take me through the process and and uh, you know teach me how to know God, you know, as a believer, not, uh, you know, as a member of a religion. 
uh, and um, you know that's when I started examining the Bible. I've started, you know, listening uh, Steve Furtnick sermons, um, and uh, also you know talking to people. And uh, this exercise, you know, led me to a very interesting discovery, which is, you know, uh, the five reasons why we as human beings exist. You know, the first one is, you know, just for, the, for God's uh, pleasure. We exist for God's pleasure. The second, uh, God wants us to love him back, want us to know, know him and love him back. And the third, you know, we need to love one another because he made us, you know, uh, uh, in his image. So we need to love one another. And third, I mean, fourth, we need to help people. We need to help one another. And uh, the fifth is that we need to worship God because that's basically what we're going to do uh, in eternity. And now when I look at, um, you know, how we come and how we go, you know, uh, how, uh, uh, you know, God bless people, you know, from different, different corners of the world, you know, how God uh, uh, anoint people with different, uh, with different gifts, uh, you know, that made me think that uh, actually, you know, we are here just to to exercise what we're going to do when we move to the eternity so that's why it's important for us to to re-examine what we do and you know uh, start thinking because you know why do you think god would give you gifts you know to run a podcast or to you know uh, uh, to to speak to people you know uh, uh, about things that only you know, our own, uh, oh, that, that, uh, things that um, are only fruitful and great from a human perspective and as from a sp spiritual perspective. So, I mean, if you do not understand that, it means everything that you're going to do is going to, you are going to leave behind and you will not be able to use that in the eternity. Say yeah. you can make a lot of money, you can have yeah. a lot of possessions, but are you going mm -hmm. to take that to eternity? Are you going to use that in God's in, in God's realm? No. Yes. All right. So um to 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 sum it up, what you wanted to tell our viewers, our brothers and sisters and friends who are listening to us right now is that we need to leave a legacy. And the best legacy is that for the Lord who made us for a purpose and a reason. We are not just blades of grasses out there. We are special creatures of God, special creatures of transformation. And the main purpose God created us is to give back the glory, glory to him by our corporal work of mercy, by loving people, helping people, by creating change in our world, positive social change in our world. And yeah, now I know the reason why you are involved in UNDP, in transformational leadership. You are involved in um, NGOs for the less privileged. Um, you are involved um, for women, orphans, and all those stuff. And I'm so happy because you are in alignment with your calling now. There are a lot of people who are already in their 50s and they're still lost and have not found themselves. And I know how difficult it is because deep inside us, there is this longing to know our, cre our creator and at the same time, know the purpose for our life. And I'm so happy that you found your purpose in life. Because your purpose, I know, by listening to you, I found out that you found your passion. And your passion is actually intertwined with your vocation or your purpose and calling in life. And I thank God because even if, well, just like 
you 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 friends are watching like, like us right now you can empathize with us that way back in the past or even now sometimes we are unaware that god's hands have been with us his grace have been working in you in 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 helio in myself in every one of us without us knowing you know these little favors 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 that we have received from friends we have received from strangers are mm -hmm. all coming from god exactly. uh, this is what i realized what while i was listening to you helio okay mm -hmm. now let's talk about i think we we just discussed about oh excited about the gig <laughs> they call it a gig or event that we are going to do in Mozambique. I, I've been hearing a lot, like what I've told you, I've been hearing a lot about Mozambique. In fact, before COVID, there was one business person I met um, online and he said he would like to bring me there. I was trying to look, but you know, I've, I've got like, oh, about 200 people, 200,000 people in my network. And uh, I was, I think, careless not to um, record his name well. So I couldn't find him anymore. But anyways, I was really looking for someone who can continue on with that vision with me. And I found you. So anyways, what is your rough idea about, well, in connection, we have we have a lot of things in common, and just that I don't sing. But I love singing because, <laughs> you know, Filipinos, we love music. We're music lovers. So, yeah, we sing. But, you know, I'm definitely not going to sing. My gifting is more on lecturing, as you can see. <laughs> my lecturing is more, I mean, my gifting is more on teaching, lecturing. So now I'm with the John Maxwell Leadership uh, a Training Institute. So um, what is your idea? Of course, you know, you need to sing because you're the singer. And, you know, music is really one of those powerful um, tools for touching lives, changing lives. And yeah, what is your rough idea about that event that you, I mean, we are organizing in Mozambique? Well, I think, uh, you see, through music, we, we the music has the power to, you know, to touch, to deeply touch people and uh, to lead to reflection sometimes, to trigger emotions. And I think, you know, um, uh, this could be a very innovative way of uh, of uh, of uh, doing transformational uh, discussions or seminars, uh, you know, uh, and trainings. Because um, you know, I think uh, the traditional way of doing things is, you know, we 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 start the lecture, you know. Uh, Straight talking, talking, point. talking. Yeah. yeah, but now the thing is, you know, to which extent their souls are ready to receive, mm -hmm. you know, to which extent their souls, you know, are in the right mood, you know, to connect with uh, transformational uh, uh, themes. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, starting uh, music will uh, will prepare, you know will kind of, uh, you know, set the tone and uh, be a sort of um, uh, a very good ground. Let's say if we if we have themes, I mean, a song connected to the themes that are going to be to be discussed, you know, that would be a sort of, a, you know, a reflection point. So through the song, they already they already start thinking, oh, yeah, but, you know, how one should behave you know in a, a situation or how you know uh, what i need to be to, to become a transformation leader and uh you know uh, through the lecturing you know it's gonna be sort of uh, 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 bridging the gap and uh you know fuel with the right uh, with the right information you know oh, oh people in the right mood, give information to people in the right mood to get that. Music can actually set the tone. And exactly. I agree with you. I agree with you, but I have other, uh, yeah, that, that's it. If you can compose something about the transformational leadership, I can share with you some of 
my notes. Uh, well, this is these are not my notes, actually. These are coming from the John Maxwell head office. Uh, I am uh, authorized to give certification. Um, uh, I mean, certificates, not certification. Not, not I mean, you know, uh, not everyone is allowed to give lectures, um, you know, using the John Maxwell modules. Only those that were certified by John Maxwell. You need to go to the USA to be certified and you need to enroll in a series of courses for one to be certified by John Maxwell. Um, I I went there, I went to Orlando, Florida, and I was certified at Hyatt. Um, I've got photos with John Maxwell, I've got short hair then because I really love short hair. It's just that my husband doesn't like me to wear short hair and that's I'm growing my hair long. <laughs> but um, at any rate, um, I think, well, well, yeah, you were talking about COVID. I'm um, going back to my travel lecture after COVID. So I think for this first time, in you know, first first time in Africa, I really endorse becoming a person of influence because I think we Christians should become persons of influence. Um, my burden is that um, we we Christians need to restore our influence in the world. Um, I have noticed that the seven mountain mount, mountain mandate, um, which was launched 30 years ago, did not come into fruition. We were not able to affect change in the seven mountains of influence. Where is Christian values in business? Where is Christian values in politics and government? Where is Christian values in arts and culture? Where is Christian values now in family? Where is Christian values now in education? I mean, seven seven mountains. Where is um, Christian values now in Matthew? Where is Christian values now in the church? So, I mean, church is not excluded. We really need to renew the church. In fact, the church should be the first uh, mountain that we need to renew. Um, I'm not going to say this today, but... Uh, I've really sensed a lot of anti-panty in this church. So, oh boy, we need to renew, revive, revitalize the church first before we can even influence all the six other mountains of influence. Um, but of course we need, you know, change starts from within, from within ourselves, um, you know, me included. Um, it is a journey towards this, this is my mission and I'm called to do this. I'm called to do uh, transformational leadership. And if there's just going to be one thing that I would like to do, and this is my prayer to God, that before I die, God, I want to see at least the world's leadership has been transformed into something, into something with, with purity with authenticity, with love, because oh, this nothing, the key for everything is love, because God is love. Well, it's easier said than done, but it's a long journey. And with this, I, that's why I'm going around, I'm, um, you know, I'm starting this August, um, South Africa, Botswana, and uh, Nigeria. Uh, yeah, uh, no, 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 not Nigeria yet. Yeah, I think Nigeria is in September. Um, Swaziland and then um, Benin and then there's oh I forgot the other one Liberia um, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to I think Brazil Rio de Janeiro Brazil Suriname um, was um, yeah well, other countries in the Caribbean and then well uh, hopefully in Mozambique in January. welcome <laughs> yeah so yeah well we can we can talk about the cancer because i like it if you can if, if you can um if, if if you can produce music on 
influencing people, becoming a person of influence. That would be good. And well, we are both creative. We can think of creative things in order for us to convey the message in a more powerful way. And I'll be very excited because this will be my first time to partner with a musician. Yeah, awesome. Mm. So, okay, going back to your music, how do you compose music? Because you will be for, let's say, comp uh, composing about transformational leadership and so, so on. When you compose your music, where do you get your inspiration from? Well, uh, I would say, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's mainly uh, through what happens in the world, you know, what I see people doing, what I, sometimes I make mistakes myself and, you know, it's a way to, you know, to ask for God's forgiveness, you know, after praying for that, you know, I think, okay, uh, how can I ensure that, you know, other people do not make the same mistake as I, so uh, maybe through music, I can do that, or, uh, you know, I, I read the Bible, and, uh, you know, uh, when a message touches me, I feel like, okay, I'm a, how am I going to share, you know, this message with, with, with others? And so that's where, you know, where the inspiration comes from. And sometimes it's just, uh, you know, out of nowhere, I just listen to, to this voice, you know, uh, pushing me to, uh, to write about something and I, I do. So again, I think God is doing his work you know, always faithful. Yeah. Yes, I I can I know I know how it works. Like sometimes you're doing something, and you know there's just this inspiration that shakes you, and yeah. when it happens, you you need to have a ball pen and a pe I mean a pen and a paper where you have to write because it's not gonna happen again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you need to receive it at a certain time when the inspiration is there. So no matter what, you sometimes you wake up at 12, 12 midnight, sometimes two. So when you wake up and an inspiration comes, you have to write it down because once you miss that, it's not gonna come back again. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a stream of ideas coming. Write it, write it, write it, record it. Yeah. yeah. It happens to you that way, right? Yeah. 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 And that's why with all the creative things that we do, um, you and I and every one of us are listening we cannot really credit ourselves for it because yeah. we know that it's all by God's grace that we are able to accomplish many things in life um, yeah you have your own story and thank you for sharing with us your story uh, today what is your advice to your let's say you know to your 12 year old self what is okay. your advice God is great. God is good all the time. And, uh, you know, uh, if you know him, if you, if you love him back, uh, you know, you, you're going to be, to make a remarkable, remarkable contribution to the society. You're going to, uh, you know, uh, get super, super ready for the eternity. And, uh, you know, being in God's presence is amazing. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's so, it's so, you know, you, you, I can't even, you know, wait the joy, you know, I can't even, you know, I couldn't even be able to, 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 to you know, put words together to describe, you know, how wonderful it is, you know, living by you know uh, God's guidance yeah. you're right you're right it is it is something that unfathomable it is something that unexplainable yeah. but it's happening and yeah. it's true people say like in in common and in common language it's like magic <laughs> yeah. But we don't really believe in magic, but it's what we call miracles. 
when we yeah. just meet the right people, we just meet kindest people in our lives. We are, get connected with people. I mean, you know, people actually bring about the best in us or the worst in us, but us being able to connect with the best people um, brought us to where we are now. And we have nothing to be proud of. We have nothing to boast of because even the talents that we have are not from us. <laughs> okay, and that's yeah. why we're giving it back to him because he was the one who called us and gave us the path and aligned us with, with the right people, the right spaces that we should be in. And so everything has to be given glory to God. Okay, so thank you so much for giving us your time today. And you're so kind. We we would like to have you back again. And maybe you can speak with us about some more of your advocacies and to plug our, our, our joint event. Because yours is going to be musical. Mine's going to be lecture. So let's. Let's have a very good concept and uh, let's come up. It's going to be my first time to be partnering with a musician. And that is going to be something new for both of us. And we will be touching lives and changing lives through our talents. It's all about talent, right? Okay. Yeah, so yeah, uh, parting words, please. Pardon? Your parting words? to our friends out there who are watching? Uh, well, it's now only, you know, I don't think um, we would be able to influence or to share our gifts with the people in Mozambique, but, uh, you know, everyone that uh, is listening to us right now, if you feel like there is something that we can support you with, you know, you can just, uh, you know, write to us and uh, we'll be gladly here to support you, to answer, you know, whatever you want to know, to support you in whichever ways we can. And uh, if you feel like, you know, we are a good match for projects that you, you might be struggling with or you might be thinking of, uh, we're here to do that because in the end, we're just, uh, you know, God's tools, you know, to share love. Yes. All right. So, yeah, thank you so much um, for your time. Um, Helio Six Pence, to listen to his music at Reverb Nation as well. Uh, thank you for being with us. Six, um, he is a visionary. He is a musician. He is a corporate person, he is a consultant, a trainer, he's well experienced to the extent of um, doing projects with United Nations, UNDP, United Nations Development, um, what is the P in UNDP? Program. <laughs> Program, okay. He is a uh, university professor, um, he likes empowering people, so he's got a lot of stuff going on in his plate right now but i'm sure that he will find time for you all right so if you need his help just you know um just write your message down below and i'm going to forward the message to him i'm going to give him this link anyway i mean the link to this podcast anyway so he'll be able to read your comments all right, so thank you once again for being with us. Thank you for inspiring me to produce more shows. This is now my 35th edition. Thank you for thank you so much for those of you who liked and followed this channel. Please don't forget to follow our channel because we have exciting guests with us. Um, I always, uh, people tell me that I'm a connoisseur of good people. So yes, this is Crazy Talks with Wise People once again. Mary Angela Tuck here from my home studio at Rio Chair United Kingdom. Thank you for watching and see you once again next week. Thank you, um, Helio Sixpence. Bye for Thank now. You. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah. <laughs>